Hi, we've got some new hot air stations to have a look at in the coming weeks and I thought as a baseline what we'd have a look at is what a professional hot air station is actually like in terms of construction and features. Now this is a Metcal HCT 900-21 which is a hot air station that I've had in my lab for about five years now and the price has dropped compared to when I originally bought it. I think it's about £500 now for this unit but it only has a 320 watt heater in the handpiece compared to what you get in the quick and the best, you know, they're in excess of 1000 watts very often. Now this has actually been designed to run for, you know, sort of very long periods, so it'd be designed to do 8 hour shifts for absolutely months on end without any trouble. So this may be where we see some differences between this and some of the Chinese offerings, because this has been designed for reliability, not for fancy features and, you know, fancy user interfaces and that kind of thing. Now the first thing that you'll notice is that this doesn't have any specific settings other than numbers in terms of temperature and the fan speed. And some people might not like that. For me, I don't find it a problem because actually, even if it says 300 degrees on the front of the hot air station, in real terms, that doesn't really mean a great deal. What you're actually doing when you're using the hot air station is you're using visual feedback to work out how much heat is getting onto the board and then you can work out whether you need to adjust either of these two settings. So the temperature is somewhat arbitrary. So a lot of these systems where you set them in one degree settings is pretty pointless because you're never going to need that kind of accuracy. If it's getting too hot, you can either lift the handle away from the PCB slightly or just adjust it down a little bit. And the potentiometers on the front mean that you've got very quick adjustment of these features. Now, one thing to note about this particular station, it's not true of all commercial stations, obviously, but this one is designed to turn on and stay on. So you don't want this sit sitting up against the wall. Basically, once you turn it on, the hot air starts turning on and it's continually pumping. So that's what I mean by the fact that it's designed for long-term use, is that actually you would leave this running for quite a few hours at a time and it's designed for continuous production work. So actually, if you're just doing a bit of odds and sods on a PCB, this may not be the kind of suitable design because you may want to turn off that heater. What it does mean is you don't need a high powered heater to get the heat and the airflow that you would get from something like the Quick because the whole point in having a 1000 watt heater in those is that they heat up quickly between taking it out of the cradle and getting it to your PCB, whereas this one is going to be always running. In terms of construction, this thing is an absolute beast. It's completely made of metal, really, really heavyweight. I don't know what it's coming in at, but it feels like almost like seven or eight kilograms for this thing. Very heavy, extremely well built. The only thing that I don't like is that cradle is just sort of hanging off the side. It's not the most fantastic cradle that I've ever seen, but it's not that offensive. It's not too bad at all. The handpiece is quite nice to hold. It's very lightweight, uh, but it's got a really nice grip where you hold it and it gives you good maneuverability. The other thing is that the hose that it comes with, um, the blower is obviously in here, so this is very lightweight. So the, the air is blown through the hose to the handpiece, and then you've got some, uh, presumably some wires for the heater and the thermostat. But this is about a meter in length, which is quite refreshing because the best station, for example, that I've got has a tube length of maybe half a meter, might be slightly more, but you actually struggle to get to where you need to um, on the workbench unless you've got the station right over. Whereas I can have this one sitting up on the shelf a bit further out of the way and it still reaches to the other side of my desk. Um, so really quite maneuverable. There's not a lot on the rear of the unit, just the IEC connector and the fuse. This is specifically a 230 volt model. So uh, no universal input as you'd expect because the heating element is running off the mains. Uh, other than that, there's not really much to say. It's quite a bare bones unit, but it's very well built and really quite heavy. There's a little screw there. So presumably this has got some kind of diaphragm pump. There's a little screw that you screw in for when you're shipping. And then when you receive the item, you unscrew that screw so that the anti-vibration mounts work. All right, so on the inside, we've got this massive diaphragm pump. You can see when you put that bolt in the middle, that just stops this from wobbling around during shipping and potentially getting broken because this is a very heavy pump. It's really quite a, a beast and clearly designed for long-term use. Now, it runs directly off the mains. This plugs into the PCB and presumably there's a solenoid type arrangement. So one coil in there and then probably a um, piston that goes through the center of the coil and drives these diaphragms. So there's one on each side and you can see the airflow goes out 
into this plenum chamber to reduce the noise and also to reduce the slightly pulsatile nature of a diaphragm pump. But this thing is clearly designed for long-term use. It's got some heat sinking around it as well, all completely made out of metal. And then we can see it's also tied onto the chassis for earthing. Inside the main body of the unit, we've got some very nice cable harnessing. So we've got an IEC inlet filter by Schaefner, one of the best brands for IEC filters. And then that goes through to the fuse on the back terminal. Now, I'm not quite sure why they didn't slide the heat shrink all the way down to the base of the fuse holder, but it's uh, not really a huge problem. But you can see, this is why the unit's so heavy. It's about four millimeter thick metal all the way around. So um, really quite heavy, even with the pump detached. Um, and we've got the mains going in and then going on to the PCB. Now here you can see, this is the tube from the air pump. And I hadn't actually realized, but it makes sense, I suppose, using a diaphragm pump. The actual control on the front here, it feels exactly like a potentiometer. There's hardly any resistance, but it actually just restricts the airflow through to the handpiece. So that does make sense. And it's a very simple mechanism. So just simply a valve that opens and closes to change the airflow to the handpiece. And then we've got the PCB at the front here. There's not really a huge amount going on. Basically, we've got our triac because the heater is going to be powered from the mains. So we can just use simple triac control. So we've got our triac attached to the front panel. Uh, this is providing a hell of a lot of heat sinking. So I've never even noticed that this get warm, uh, even after quite a lot of time. And then on the PCB itself, we've got the AC coming in, we've got a filter. Um, big capacitor here as well for a bit of power factor correction, that kind of thing. We've got a little transformer. Uh, we've got one connector at the back there. That's the one that goes off to the pump. And then we've got a connector just here with those uh, brown and blue wires that go off to the heater through the tubing. And then it looks like our temperature sensor is just on the yellow and red wire that also go through that tubing to the handpiece. So the PCB itself is quite simple. We've got a little transformer here for the electronics. Uh, we've got a couple of electrolytic capacitors and a bridge rectifier. Uh, we've got our optocoupler driver for the triac. And it doesn't look like there's anything else on there, but there's actually a couple of surface mount parts underneath, a couple of 8-pin devices. I suspect one is something like a PIC-12F. All it needs to do is do some kind of calibrated temperature and convert that into a waveform to drive the triac. And it's getting the zero crossing also from another... Um, up to isolator just down there and not a lot else to it when you turn on the device um, obviously it runs the pump and the heater when you turn it back off again it just runs the pump for about two minutes afterwards to make sure that, that heater really cools down to room temperature but yeah not a huge amount to go wrong quite a simple design um, and this is what I mean like although there's um, there are some electrolytic capacitors on here there's really not a huge amount to go wrong. The only thing that you're probably ever going to need to replace on this thing is the heater in the handpiece. All right, so a quick demo of the operation. It really is very simple. You just turn it on and it immediately starts heating up. Now with the 320 watt heating element, it might be a little bit slower to heat up than some of the others. So let's turn it up. So I normally have it on about number four. And that looks to be about 220, 230 degrees. So pretty much what I would have expected, actually. That seems to be a good setting. It's supposed to be thermostatically controlled. So let's turn down the airflow and we shouldn't see it change too much. And that's pretty responsive, actually. Just quickly changing it. We're just seeing a little bit of a drift in the temperature. But really not too bad at all. I have never looked to see what the maximum is, so let's turn it all the way up. Looks like about 330, something like that. And then on this one, when you turn it off, that's not actually a hard power switch, so now it goes into the cool down routine where it's actually uh, allowing the heating element to cool down properly before turning off the pump. So one thing you might not be able to pick up on the video is just how quiet this unit is. Literally all you can hear is the airflow along with a small mains frequency hum because that diaphragm pump is running at 50 hertz. But really very inoffensive and not loud at all. Not like the best where you can hear 
the PWM frequency of the brushless motor that's driving the airflow through the handpiece. So that's a little look at the Metcal HCT900, what I would consider a benchmark for the quality of construction. I'm not suggesting in any way that this is suitable for hobbyists. It certainly doesn't suit a lot of people with the fact that, generally speaking, you'd turn it on and leave it running all the time because it's quite slow to cool down and that kind of thing. But uh, this is a very nicely built piece of equipment, uh, but they, you do pay a premium for that. If you compare it to some of the Chinese pieces of equipment, they're a lot more full featured, but a lot of the stuff you really don't need. The only thing that would be nice really on here is just a visual indication of what the temperature actually is. But for me, this is the ideal control. You just want potentiometers or whatever just to control the airflow and the temperature very quickly. You don't want to be fiddling about with little up and down buttons with one degree increments. That just really isn't helpful for anyone when you want to quickly make a change. You just want to be able to twiddle the knob and it get there. Now Metcal do have a newer unit that's got an LCD on the front of it, but it's commanding almost double the price of this unit. I think it's coming in at about eight or nine hundred pounds, which is really quite expensive for what effectively is a unit that's just blowing out controlled hot air. But I wanted to use this as a benchmark because we're going to be looking at a few different stations in the future and just wanted to compare what you get if you actually have a professional piece of kit as opposed to something a little bit cheaper. So hopefully you found the video interesting and until next time, thanks for watching.